Good morning. Hey there to all of my friends. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Virtual New Life Kids, or we just like to say for short, Kids Rock. I am so happy that you're here today. Thank you for joining me. Um, how are you doing? I know many of you have started school this week and many of you have started school at home. And I wanna tell you how proud I am of you and I just want to say I'm so excited for how God is going to help you to have a wonderful school year. And you know what? Because I'm so excited, I actually have a special guest who wants to tell you how excited he is and how much he thinks you're awesome and that you're gonna do great this year. All right, are you ready for my guest? Are you ready? Okay, special guest, come on up. All right, I am so glad to be with you guys on this morning. Now, I'm not gonna take up all your time so you don't have to turn it off since, oh, Bishop Mark, oh my God. I just wanted to just say to you, I'm proud of you, and this is what is gonna happen. This year is still going to be a year in which you may A's, and you make B's, you are still going to do great in school, whether it is at home, whether it is at school, or whether it is a hybrid of both, whether your teacher is your mom, your dad, and your teacher at school, however it is, guess what? You are a unique generation. No other generation, no other group of kids since, well, I don't know, for the past hundred years would have this opportunity to learn the way you're going to learn this year. So I'm excited about it. I'm amazed at what God is going to do through you. So just go at it, do well, and we know A's and B's are coming your way. Thank you so much. That is the pastor of our church, Bishop Dudley. And I'm so glad that he told you how excited he is. And I'm so excited for you. And I'm cheering you on. I've got my pom-pom here. I'm cheering you on. And I've got a noisemaker. I'm cheering you on. You're going to have a great school year. And I even have some special glasses because I celebrate you. Check out my sparkly glasses. There we go, yes, so I'm excited for your school year and you're gonna do so well. So like I said, my name is Pastor Mo and I'm the children's pastor at New Life and that means I get to help kids just like you know what it means to love and follow God. And the question is, why would we want to love and follow God? Because he loves us. He created us, and it's been God's plan since the very beginning of time to be with us, to be our friend, to be in a relationship with us. So today, we're going to explore God's words through the Bible. Hope you've got your Bibles ready, and we're going to celebrate God's greatness with a song. So all you need for today is yourself and your Bible. Do you have one? If so, hurry and get it really fast so you can be ready for today. And if not, ask the adults that you're living with if you can have one. But hurry back so you won't miss anything. Go get your Bible. I hope you're ready. Okay, so it's been an incredible month around here, and we're wrapping it up today. We've been discovering how creative God is and seeing how he made us to be creative too. Remember, we've been saying this all month long, so hopefully you really got it down. And if you're brand new today, that's okay. You get to hear it for the first time. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. It's pretty great to know that we're made in God's image because, well, God is great. We're made in the image of a great God who loves us. So one way we can clearly see God's greatness is his creation. He's made some pretty amazing things. Take salt, for example. You probably don't think much about this simple ingredient you sprinkle on your eggs or your popcorn, but salt plays a huge role in the natural world. Have you ever seen salt flats? Hmm. That might look like sand, but it's actually salt. Salt flats are created when lakes in the desert dry up. Or what about the Dead Sea? 
The extreme salt has caused some really amazing salt formations in this area of the world, which is exactly near where Jesus lived when he was here on earth. Not only that, but there's also so much salt in this particular sea that it's impossible for people to sink in the water. Like if you get in the water, you can't sink. That's crazy, right? God has created some amazing and incredible things all around the world. And so remember, everything good in this world is a reflection of the great God who made it and made us. The one who made everything. Okay, now, I hope you're ready with your Bible because we're going to say our memory verse. Now, I know that you may already know it, especially if you've been with us every time. But if this is your first week, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, which is kind of like in the middle of the Bible, and it's spelled P-S-A-L-M-S. -S. And we're going to be in Psalms chapter 145, verse 3. So you're going to see a big 145 and a little 3. Are you ready? We're going to read the memory verse together. And I have my Bible here. I'm ready to read the memory verse with you. And if you have been with us all month long, why don't you try to say it without looking at your Bible? Are you ready? Let's do the memory verse together. Here we go. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalms 145 and 3. And that means, friends, that it's completely impossible for us to understand God's greatness. God is such a big and wonderful God. We won't ever really get it. Like, we won't ever understand it all the way. It's impossible for us to explain how wonderful he is. And he's indescribable, which has been our theme this month. So I'm excited because we're getting ready to dig into the Bible today to learn more about what God wants to teach us about creativity. So... As usual, I'm going to kick it to my friend Jacob to start us off for our Bible story today. Here we go. Man, what I wouldn't give for a peanut. What's up, everybody? It's me, Jacob, and today we're getting creative with light. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And God could tell you a thing or two about light. It was the first thing he created after all. Let there be light. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Did you know that light can travel at 186,000 miles per second? If you were in a spaceship, it would take you three days to get to the moon. Light can travel to the moon in about a second. Fly me to the moon. Let me burp in the stars. And never... You can use light in all kinds of creative ways. Not only can you make shadow puppets. <laughs> you need light to take pictures and make videos. This won't do at all. This is terrible lighting. Lights! No, no, down, down with the lights. No, too bright. Thank you. You can use lights to make a concert more exciting. You can even use light to communicate. S O S. Need help. I'm out of chocolate. Sad emoji. I don't actually know Morse code. In today's story, we're going to learn about another use for light. In fact, we're going to learn how you and me can be the light. I can make a bee. I can make a bee. It's, you gotta get the wings. Uh, oh, okay. Bee. I'm a bee. See you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. 
Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Kisa Jones tied the strings of a large white apron carefully behind her back. She glanced at awe at the gleaming silver countertops and appliances in the kitchen of a cupcakery where her brother Robert worked. This is amazing. Yeah, pretty great Myers letting us use the mixer and stove. Pretty great, you're helping me. Keisha offered to bake cookies to raise funds for the new marching band uniforms. Even better, she convinced Robert to help her. He clipped the smudge recipe page over the counter. Brown butter and toffee chocolate chip cookies? Sounds weird. Trust me, they are the bomb. Robert worked evenings in a bakery for three years, so Keisha had to admit, he probably did know. She looked over the recipe. Two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt? Actually, we're quadrupling the recipe, so that's four teaspoons of salt. Robert tossed Keisha a set of measuring spoons. Cookies are supposed to be sweet. Won't the salt ruin them? Nope. Salt actually brings out the flavors. What does that even mean? You want to test it out? Fine. I'll make a batch with salt. You make one without. You're on. The siblings work quickly as Robert showed Keisha how to mix dry ingredients and wet ingredients separately. What do we do now? Add the dry ingredients into the wet mix on low speed. Slowly. Or you will make a flower storm all over this kitchen. I knew that. As Keisha worked, though she began to hear another sound over the mixer. Wow, rain's really coming down. Yeah, and this is such an old building that every time it storms, the power goes out. I can't see a thing. Robert fumbled with his phone until the flashlight came on. It always comes back on pretty fast. We can wait it out. Robert settled down on the floor, back against the cabinets. Keisha sighed and sat down too. She checked her phone. My battery's dying. Entertain me. What? You can't live without your phone? I don't know. Tell me a story. I was just thinking of one about salt. Really? One that Jesus told. Ooh, that one. Sermon on the Mount. Well, it fits. You know, the cookies. Fine. Read it to me, preacher man. It's in Matthew. I know that. Robert settled in with his Bible app. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Then he began to teach, and pretty quick he gets into this part. You are the salt of the earth. That's it? Well, no. I mean, then Jesus talks about throwing out the salt if it loses its saltiness. How do you even know if you're salty? I think it's like the cookies. Salt makes things taste better, and people who follow Jesus can make life taste better. Mmm, like chocolate chip cookies. Robert punched her lightly in the shoulder. You know what I mean. When we share God's story, we bring hope to others. We help to fill their lives with kindness and joy and peace. All that good stuff. Okay, okay, I get it. Salt, good. There's something about light too, right? Yep. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Keisha shifted, trying to get comfortable on the hard floor. So when we follow Jesus... By showing God's love to others... When we do that, others can see God better and what to do. Like a bright light. Yikes! Robert leapt up and tried to stop the mixer as the power came on. Keisha stood and stretched, blinking. Like a bright light. You planned that, huh? Of course. Well played. Hey, I'm going to put salt in my batch of cookies after all. Well played. As Keisha measured the salt, she smiled. The cookies would have came out great, but she has some thinking to do about ways she can become salt and light herself.
Jesus said that I am a light. He said that you are a light. And we should let our light shine so others can see it. And when we shine our lights, it will help point people to God. So, how do we shine our lights? Well, we can give someone a helping hand. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Oh. We can cheer someone on. You can listen when someone else needs to talk. That's my ear. Listening. Only you can shine your light the way you can. So get creative. All you have to do is treat others the way Jesus did. Love people, serve people, and treat people like they matter. Then you'll be giving people a glimpse of God's story. You'll show people how much God loves them and how much they matter to him. Here's the one thing to remember today. God created you to share his story. Tell people with your words what God has done. Or use your actions to point people to him. No matter what, let your light shine. I know I'll never forget that. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Ugh. Bye. Ugh. Okay. Wow, be salt and light. Who knew that salt would actually help us understand how we need to represent Jesus in the world? And so the one thing we remember today, everybody, is God created you to share his story. That's right. We can't keep a loving God all to ourselves. We have to share the light. Now, when we learn something about God from the Bible, we should find ways to help us think about it more. Another way to say that is to meditate on it. Friends, we have to meditate on God's word. We have to spend time thinking about it. It helps us remember what we learned, and it gives God a chance to speak to us more about what we learned and who he is. And God speaks to you, even though you're young. He speaks to you. As a matter of fact, you can probably hear God better than some adults who are super distracted. So you've got three things to do this week to help you remember about what we learned. Number one, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think about who in your family needs to hear God's story. Who in your family needs to hear God's story? Who in your family needs to know how much God loves them, how much God cares for them? Is it a cousin? Is it a brother, a sister? Is it an aunt? Is it your grandma? Is it your granddad? Who in your family needs to know about God's story? So pray that God would give you the opportunity to share it. Pray that God would give you the chance to share his love with someone in your family. The second thing I want you to do is to ask an adult to share with you about how God is a part of their story. Ask an adult that you live with, could be your mom, could be your dad or your grandparents, whoever you live with, ask them to help you, ask them to share, how is God a part of your story? And see what they say. Now, number three, we know has nothing to do with the Bible story, but we do it just for fun. So it is our joke of the week. Here we go. So last week, our joke was this. Where do polar bears keep their money? Where do polar bears keep their money? Drum roll, please, for the answer. Okay. That was a terrible drum roll, by the way. Like, I can't roll my tongue to make it sound like a drum roll. But you get the point. Where do polar bears keep their money? Are you ready? A snowbank. Ah! <laughs> they keep it in a snowbank. Polar bears in the cold in a snowbank. Like a snowbank, which is like a big thing of snow. Okay. Anyway, maybe you don't know what a snowbank is. But that was our one from last week. So are you ready for the one this week? Here we go. What are the strongest days of the week? Hmm. What are the strongest days of the week? I don't know. You will have to come back next week to find out the answer. What are the strongest days of the week? Now, 
We are ending our time together today, and it's a great time to grab an adult who's in the house with you because we're going to pray together. It's important that we pray with one another. You can pray by yourself or you can pray with your family members. And right now, I'm asking you to grab an adult in your house that you can pray with right now. If you're an adult that's watching with your child or your niece, your nephew, whoever, thanks so much for joining us. It is awesome. So glad that you're here. Are you ready to pray? We're going to pray together. And then after we pray, we're going to sing our song together and thank God for how wonderful of a creator he is. Okay, are you ready to pray? Here we go. Our Father who is in heaven, your name be praised. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today everything we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive others who sinned against us. Lead us away from temptation and rescue us from evil. Your kingdom is powerful and full of your glory forever. And Lord, I just ask that you would be with my friends this week. Lord, as they start off school, as they continue school, Lord, pour out your spirit on them. Help them. Help them, Lord. Help them to do the things that they need to do, Lord, and encourage them. Help them to do their absolute best and help them to know that you are with them and they can depend on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, everybody, God loves you, and I love you too. And we're going to end our time together by singing to the Lord. So stand on up. It's our song. This is like our jam by now, everybody, okay? So here we go. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna. 